Hello, my name is Geogen and welcome back to World of Warships. We haven't had a World of Warships in a little while, so why not hit it hard with the Congo class, tier 5 Japanese battleship, and it's a very, very capable battleship indeed, even in tier 6 games, and when it was in close beta, sometimes up to tier 7 games, maybe tier 8, um, but that was due to the poor matchmaking. So in this video i'm going to talk about the statistics and then we're going to have some gameplay so stick around for that as well as the main strengths and weaknesses of the congo class battleships okay let's begin the fact that it is a battleship means it has a good amount of hit points which is 54,100, in its fully upgraded configuration this gives you a lot of leeway in order to do aggressive tactics. However, being too aggressive may lead to your downfall, as I have experienced on several occasions. Additionally, we have very good artillery. Um, according to this, we have 82 in artillery parameters. So the main armaments are these 356 main batteries, and there are four turrets with two guns in each. And they fire up to a range of 21.2 kilometers. Now, that is pretty, pretty damn good. And you'll be able to outshoot any opponent in a American battleship, say, in the New York class. If we take a look at the New York class, we'll be able to see how much it can fire. Or how far it can fire. So in its stock configuration, it can only fire up to 14 kilometers. So let's update that to... Hmm. There we go. So its maximum firing range is 15.6. However, it can... Can it not deploy a plane? Interesting. I don't think the New York can carry a plane. Never mind. So that's another advantage you get, is the Congo carries a reconnaissance aircraft back here. And this will extend your firing range to around 25, 26 kilometers if you need to fire that far. However, using your guns or your main armaments at that extreme range will often lead in failure because of the high dispersion on battleship weapons. So I'd say from ranges of around 13, 15 kilometers, you're much more accurate and between four and ten kilometers you're reasonably accurate as well although rng will sometimes ruin your day like it does in every game you play or every game you play it has the opportunity to ruin your game moving on to the secondary armament before i ramble on about rng <laughs> you have some very decent secondary armaments when you're upgraded you have these 127s, which are mounted in dual configuration, and there's four of these turrets. They have a firing range of 4.8 kilometers. Now, bearing in mind this is with my extent, uh, my, sorry, my equipment. If I took that off, I believe it's say four and a half kilometers. Bear that in mind. And these 152s also have a 4.8 kilometer range with the upgrades. And at stock, with no upgrade, it's 4.5, which is still nice. And you have 14 of these guns all along the broadside of the ship on both sides. You can see them here and on this side as well. So the main armaments are very nice indeed. Moving on to the AA. Now the AA is okay. The AA is not the best, but it does get the job done but you generally do need some fire support. You have these 13mm guns. They're not very good. They only have a 2.1km range. I think it's less than that with... Actually, no. I think that is the stock range. And then you also have these 13mm quads, which are better. Do more damage. And then these standard 25mm dual turrets. And of course, you have the 127s, which do low amounts of damage a second but have a good firing range for aerial targets 
The Americans, however, are much better with their anti-aircraft defences. That is their thing, and you have to get used to it if you want to play Japanese battleships. Maneuverability. Good for a battleship. 30 knots speed. Top speed with the fully upgraded. This is all fully upgraded with, as I say, some modules. Turning speed, or rudder shift time rather, is 13.8 seconds, which is okay. It's still slow, but it is a huge ship, so you're going to have to bear with it. 770 meter turning circle is also quite large, but again, large size, large ship. You're going to have to deal with it, basically. I can see when factors are very bad as well. You can be detected from 16 kilometers. However, when they detect you, they're in your firing range, so it doesn't matter too much. And aerial detectability is also poor with 11.7 kilometers. However, this is a battleship trait because if you're in an aircraft, you're going to see this whopping great big thing in the sea before you see a destroyer. And that's how the game is coded anyway. Now, just so you know the stock variant of the Congo, this is its upgrade tree. You've only got one... Um, Hmm, what's the phrase? One upgrade stock guns, main battery, and you have three upgrades for the hull. And you have two, sorry, one upgrade for the firing range or the gun control system. And also you have an engine upgrade. When you're stock, your top speed is only 25 knots, which is not too slow, but having the top engine is much nicer to drive this ship it's a glorious ship when it's fully upgraded and also when you're a stock congo you have less health you have less than fifty thousand health you don't have an aircraft you do have more secondary gun turrets but who really cares because you don't have good aa moving on with the congo you do get an aircraft you do get more anti-aircraft armaments and you do get more hit points the last upgrade gives you the best amount of AA protection, however. So, that was the Congo and its stats. Just so you know, I use main battery mod 1, which reduces the chance of the main battery being destroyed or detonated. And this is the secondary battery I was on about, Mark 2s, the modification 2s, which increase your firing range of your secondary battery by 20% which is very nice. And also fire control or damage control systems, minus three and 5% chance of flooding and fires respectively. Something you're going to have to put up with with all battleships is the fact that they get set on fire a lot and you cannot use your control ability all the time because as a long cooldown, you have to be, you have to chill basically, you have to know when it is necessary to use the control ability and when it is unnecessary. Additionally, with battleships, of course, you get the health or the repair ability. Let me just remind myself of what that is called before I make a fool of myself. Let's see. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. It's just the repair ability. And you're going to have to use that in order to make yourself effective or the most effective enough of the stats let's take a look at some gameplay so here we are in the replay for the congo we are on a new map added in patch 0.4.1 uh, i believe 0.4.1 if i'm wrong correct me but that's what i thought it was and it's called straight and as you can see there's quite a large amount of open space, open water. However, towards the center, or there's this band towards the middle of the map, full of islands. Four large islands, along with some smaller minor islands. And the team split, as you can see, is half on one side of the islands and half on the other. So we have already got to our top speed of 30 knots. And as you can see, having this speed in a battleship allows you to do things that others can't do so quickly, such as turn. Anyway, we're aiming at a target, and it's an Aoba. We're firing at a 
17 kilometer range, and as you can see, my shells have not been led very well. So we have to reload. We're also firing HE at this range, just in case we do hit, but we may hit a non-vital component of an enemy vessel, and therefore do minimal damage. We want to do some fire damage, we want to do some critical damage, so we're going to fire HE at these ranges. And this Ioba has turned, and we're looking for the shot. We can fire all of our weapons, and we have around a 26 second reload with crew skills, with equipment. So we managed to strike one of our eight shells, and you can see the inaccuracy of battleship weapons at longer ranges. We're under attack by enemy aircraft now, bombers. Or I thought it was at least. One of our friendly vessels has just been bombed to half his hit points. And you can see we do open up with our secondaries. Uh, sorry, our AA. But we are unable to shoot down any of those aircraft. They're too fast and they were at the extremity of our anti-aircraft capabilities. So we do fire our HE in the meantime at that opposing Congo. And we set him on fire. And you can see he has decided to let it burn. Probably because he doesn't want to extinguish it and get set on fire straight away. So he's just going to let it burn like a lot of battleship drivers do. We've reloaded armor piercing. Looking for the citadels. We only managed to get 5,000 damage. But 5,000 damage in a non-penetration is still pretty nice. We have to slow down for this Mitsuki. We don't want to ram him, he's a very light ship compared to us, and he's launching his torpedo spreads as well. So the reload of the Congo isn't too bad with crew skill and equipment. And it's quite a nice ship to play there for. Looking for the Citadel again. Don't manage to get it, but we do get another 4,000 damage. Let's see if we get lucky this time. There it is. There it is. That's what people play battleships for. Those nice 15k hits <laughs> with the citadels. So you can see the Congo's weapons are more than effective at dealing with itself at these mid-close range. Mid-close ranges. And now we're going to readjust our target to this enemy New Mexico, which has a formidable amount of weapons, and they're very powerful. However, he is quite slow, and therefore we miss all of our shells, and also they were a bit too close compared to him. Torpedoes, we need to evade these. We do not want to take a torpedo in the side and have flooding damage. We are able to avoid two of them, but one slams straight into our turret, knocking out our steering... Ah, knocking out our steering and our ship is now flooding. However, the remaining torpedoes I don't think are going to hit us. And there we go. Nice. We made it. I believe one of our secondary guns is opening up. Or anti-aircraft. At some target, but we still don't manage to shoot down anyone and their annoying marauding aircraft. Now we're readjusting our turrets. The turrets, however, they do turn pretty slowly. Uh, it's around 45 to 50 seconds, I believe. So that is one thing that may frustrate you if you're used to playing cruisers and perhaps destroyers. This Aoba, however, is a much more easy target to align with. And we lead the shells a bit more this time because the Aoba is a cruiser and it's quite fast. However, we miss because He's noticed the torpedo for it, and he turns. Meaning our shells are pretty much useless. But we still got number three and four turrets waiting. And we fire when he realigns himself to show his broadside. And there is what we were wait waiting for. Another 11,000 damage with the Citadel. Torpedoes on our left. They run out of steam, thankfully even though they are Japanese torpedoes and they are very scary for any battleship player. Japanese torpedoes, very powerful and have a good speed and range, generally. 
Aoba is closer now. Shells are a bit slow, however, but we still managed to do 2,040 damage. Now we're on fire, and our repairability from the flooding damage and the torpedo strike is um, still on cooldown. Didn't think I was going to hit those shells, but he turns to give my shells more surface area to land, and therefore he dies. <laughs> that New Mexico is still up. And you notice how I have to let the flames burn until my repairability is, is done. Sorry, there's a bit of lag there. Seems the replay isn't quite as flowing as I first thought. So you see I'm taking heavy damage from the fire. And I pop my repair abilities because I'm getting a bit low on health. And the fire goes out within 8 seconds anyway. Takes some substantial damage from the New Mexico, and now we're under attack by enemy bombers. We do manage to shoot an aircraft down at long last, however. When the enemy aircraft get to within about two and a half kilometers, the guns do get more effective. You can see there's quite a lot of tracers going in the air right now. Gosh, that was a long outburst of commentary. <laughs> and now we're on fire, and we get rid of that fire because we're on 20,000 hit points. We want to keep as many of these hit points as possible. And now this is a bizarre sight. A battleship is pushing a boat class aircraft carrier. Well, that's what it looks like from here. <laughs> so, once again, realign the target. And open up. However, we're looking for the invisible bow class, which, you know, as Jingles would probably say, has engaged its Klingon cloaking device. <laughs> and it does seem quite true most of the time. Anyway, we're using the smoke now from the friendly destroyer. However, because we're opening up with our guns, we're still detected. And because this battleship's pretty damn big anyway. Those shells, again, we gave them too much lead. So let's get closer to the target. Take a look behind us. We got a friendly battleship. Friendly destroyer in front and cruiser to the right hand side. Almost reloaded. The team in the north is doing okay as well. But the game is a bit closer than I first thought. Those shells look better, don't you think? He's launching his bombers again. And another nice citadel for another 11,000 damage. Very Nice to see, that's what we want in these battleship games. And another Citadel! <laughs> but then again, aircraft carriers don't have the thickest armour. They're designed to carry aircraft, after all. And they're pretty much hollow. But they're not hollow, but they're, they have a lot more air in them compared to battleships. And that's satisfying to hear that enemy aircraft carrier sunk noise, which means these enemy bombers, which were from his aircraft carrier, will be the last attack that we receive. There it goes, and they missed anyway, so... <laughs> Friendly fighters are shooting them up, as well as my AA, which is all well and good. The AA does sound pretty... I was going to say good, but it does sound a bit weird, doesn't it? But we do manage to get the enemy shot down. So now they have three destroyers and two battleships as opposed to our two battleships, two cruisers, three destroyers and one aircraft carrier. And this, I'm pretty happy with that shot because you can see he's coming outside from that island and lo crap there's destroyers in my vicinity but we do hit him for 7k plus a little bit more. Five of our shells out of eight hit. So Enemy destroyer 10 kilometers away. He knows I'm here because I've been detected. But that's not the destroyer I'm worried about. I'm more worried about that guy in front of me, even though he's on very low health. He's only 6 kilometers away, and he's likely launched his torpedoes. So let's see what we can do. Oh, there's another destroyer. All three destroyers are in my vicinity. And, okay, right, are we going to avoid this? Nope, I've 
put it into a right hand turn and oh that's 9,000 of my health gone hit the repairs sorry hit the damage control ability and wait for the repairs we have to wait 45 seconds and we've loaded high explosive for these pesky destroyers in there fast maneuverable and small ships our first spread does nothing or salvo rather more torpedoes going to the right hand side always change your course when you have to fight enemy destroyers in a battleship especially at these closer ranges you have to try and trick them into thinking you're going one way and you have to plan your movements in advance even if you do you will be hit on multiple occasions and my secondaries are opening up they're in their 4.8 kilometer range and that's some nice critical damage but it doesn't sink him unfortunately now this guy may wander into secondary range he's at 4.8 kilometers 4.7 there it is opening up please kill him okay he's dead we didn't get the kill unfortunately doesn't matter and there it is just that battleship to go And there we go. That's the end for me in this game. 916 points. Not a bad round for the Congo. So as you can see, a very nice Congo game. 256,000 ex experience wow that would be amazing 256,000 credits that's equally as good uh, it isn't but 256,000 credits earned is very nice regardless 4,200 experience is also good 200 free experience two enemies destroyed five aircraft shot down which shows the limitations of the AA we hit 31 of our main battery shells and we got those nice citadel penetrations four times we also got a bit more money because of that mission down there so team score wise we came second on the team we got a base experience of 1873 with the isokaze on our team a tier 4 japanese destroyer getting 1900 experience the enemy team did quite well that boat shot down 16 enemy aircraft so well played to him however our boat shot down 22 aircraft so even more well done to him on our team detailed report 104 shots fired 77,000 damage done with some he as well and you can see we fired 31 of our secondaries but they all missed <laughs> and you can see if you can see that little image the aircraft we shot down were all bombers so there you go hope you enjoyed the replay of the congo class i enjoy playing this vehicle tell me your thoughts down below do you think this is a better vehicle better ship than the new york when they're both fully upgraded or do you think that the new york has better aa and makes it a better ship tell me your thoughts down below and as always this has been World of Warships, I've been Jurgen, and I'll see you chaps and chapettes in the next one.